it's going to run as smooth as it was supposed to be running. And if it runs as smooth as it wanted to be running, then the people that's listening, that's falling into the governmental structure or the matriarchy is only going to be able to produce their best life because there is no other options but in order to live in prosperity, truth, love, and happiness. And if you don't want to live in prosperity, truth, love, and happiness, you can't stay here because we're going to be vibrating on the wrong frequency and we're going to agitate your demons and your demons going to torment your ass for staying in the midst of all of these motherfuckers throwing Marty all across the land from coast to motherfucking coast everywhere. They and draw that wisdom from them they there for a reason losing this fight for a reason because you can't learn the required lessons to feed the youth victory if you have never been defeated so yeah Farrakhan took some losses and Dr. York took some losses and um, um, Jeff Ford took some losses and Imam Abu Jamal took some losses and um, Mumia took some losses they all took losses so we can win. Put it all together. It's a big jigsaw puzzle. Take all their losses. Don't let them remain losses. Turn them into lessons. You can't lose then. Turn the losses of the past into the lessons for the now. Take the technology and the wisdom of today and apply it to the victory struggle. Unify. Find what you agree on. You don't supposed to agree on everything or you wouldn't be an individual, but you can find what you agree with. Support what you agree with. The brother Lamel put together a program. I didn't know the brother from a box of rocks, but the description of the program, I agreed with that. I supported that. Anybody don't think, anybody think I'm making it up. All you got to do is ask him. The brother came here. We sat and talked about it because I believe in the family oriented programs. I believe in the unification programs because I know as a mystic studying the blood rights, the rights to the blood, the message in the rights and the message in the blood rights and studying the problem in the whole Hegelian dialectic. The only thing that this damn devil fear is one unified front. And we ain't got to kill nothing. We ain't got to shoot nothing. We can just sit down at home together. Everybody, let's go home at the same time and sit down. And we're going to wait. And we're going to see how much money he going to make off of our struggle while we sitting at home watching him fall apart. He can't do it. So your conscious community, if they really want to be conscious, if, if they really want to be conscious, every opportunity of unity, dive all over it now a tragedy recently happened with um nipsey hustle and it's rare that i ex exposed to an artist from an interview that makes me interested in his music and this brother was doing exactly what i'm telling you right now and he lost his life whether it has anything to do with the struggle itself or the obstacle to the struggle, which is loose cannon gangbangers, or whether it's an orchestrated effort to silence a voice, it does not matter. Every one of them brothers that supported him in the aftermath, Nick Cannon, um, Nas, Jay-Z, um, them sisters, Beyonce, that is the message we should take from that. That brother, is a martyr in our community for our liberation. If we let him lay there for no reason, he died in vain. But if we can find some use out of the loss for the greater benefit, just follow his course of action. Reach out to every brother you think is, hey, Jay-Z, won't you put crumb sound bites on one of your songs, man? Let the people hear what that young brother got to say. Let them hear him. Expose him. Hey, yo, Nas. 
won't you uh drop a verse or something with uh the Tasmaniac over there? You know, reaching out, making them connections. And you don't have to be no, it don't have to be every day in the news that you're making connections. Nobody need to know everything you're doing. But you have to be wise enough to know that your enemy does not want you to make any connections. And if the enemy doesn't want you to make any connections, then you should be trying to make every connection. Every connection. If you know a dude that's the police and he got some sensibility of consciousness, he can be used to quell the violence of those that look like him by taking the lead in dealing with those that look like him as opposed to acting like the ones that don't look like him in pursuit of the ones that look like him. So as Ice Cube saying that uh, notorious NWA song, Black Police showing out for the white cop, it's not really about that, but it comes, comes across as that. See, that blue wall is a whole nother bloodline. That's why they call it the blue wall. Those people that um, are drafted into it, they have to have a certain makeup, a certain character, especially if they come from certain ethnic groups. You won't take a dude out of a, um, a middle-class environment to send him somewhere where he's not going to be able to function. Unless you can find uh, some kind of personality abnormality that would make him work in an adverse condition, which is a mild form of sociopathy or sociopath. He had to be a mild sociopath in order to go from upper middle class and middle class and police to gutter. Because he wouldn't have the natural qualities or else he would have been born in the ghetto. So they draft a combination of officers that they put together, a sociopath with a, uh, Masochist. The masochist will do anything to please that sociopath. So then it looked like the black police showing out for the white cop. But you can also see it in the reverse because they learn to take what they call role reversal, good cop, bad cop. And they teach it in the academies as what they call mutt and Jeff routine, where they put you between two different personality types to get you to break. So if your conscious community don't want to be an obstacle to the struggle, Every individual that's aware of the leading and forefront members of the conscious community don't support any of their shenanigans to bring one another down. Don't support that. But if you see like young Pharaoh, be like, hey, what's up, Prince Short? Get that brother a thousand hearts. Let him know that that's what we support. We don't support the tear down uh, maintenance of the overall oppressor's system. We can't continue to divide and conquer and overthrow oppression. What the people not really understanding is it's real simple once the unity is met, then the oppressor's already agreed to go. But the oppressor do not believe that the people want to be free enough to come together and say this thing, hey, we want free. That's it. We're not tolerating the oppression no more. We're not tolerating all of the uh, inequalities across the economic lines when we understand that that's all we have to do. We don't have to blow nothing up. We don't have to send nuclear bombs all over this planet and level it like it's been done before many times in the past, getting rid of these monsters. Because we have a higher order of ancestor that has given the decree that if the people was to unify, the oppression is over. The people will unify if the orders are given correctly. That means that if we understand it, where our power is and how to use it and make no apologies for issuing orders, if we can understand them three things, we ain't got to understand nothing else. We know what platforms are big enough for the people to recognize the order that's given. We know who the orders should go to because of um, historical decrees, um, ancestral uh, covenants, and modern politics. All these come into play. We know it all. We know it all. 
Garvey wrote a whole play, but it wasn't a play. It's African conjure. And he said that the kid, uh, go read the play. I'm going to give it up. Go read the play Garvey wrote about the final king that everyone thought was I Selassie I. Haile Selassie. That hasn't happened yet. And I'm going to tell you how you know. Because according to what Garvey wrote in the play, when this king is crowned in Africa, it would be no more suffering and no more misery on earth. This is directly taken from um, Revelations, uh, Ezekiel, hieroglyphics, and oral histories around the world. So this is already written to happen. It's going to happen. Now, even if it was a myth and nobody originally believed it, there's something else at play called collective consciousness. This goes to the conscious community. Collective consciousness. I mean, everybody thinking in one mind. The collective consciousness said that a king got to be crowned on earth to end the misery. So even if when it was originally put down over 700,000 years ago, the first time, if it was a myth then, because of the continuous belief systems adopting the same idea across culture barrier and boundary across all geography and topography of the earth because it's that much energy put into this idea over such a prolonged period of time it has to manifest and the closing of the age is now this is the jubilee if it wasn't going to manifest any other time, it would have to now in order to have a successful closing of the age or a, a transitioning of the eras. You have to fulfill all covenants and agreements with the creator and the lesser gods, the creator and the lesser gods. All of our punishments have been fulfilled. Do your conscious community know this? All of our transgressions have been redeemed. But do your conscious community know this? If they knew this and they really was truly conscious and they knew what was going on on the whole world stage, then they would automatically know to push all conscious communities to one voice. You got to have one voice on the world stage as a collective. One voice. That one voice can't be egotistical to the point where they cannot speak effectively on behalf of the people. So do not let your conscious community, overinflated egos and well-read minds seduce you into surrendering your soul for a dollar. This is bigger than money. Money is a side effect. This is the final awakening of those who have um, paid a penance for a prior misdeed. Everybody has to have an opportunity to sin. Everybody has to have a chance. Nobody could be deprived. We have to remember that if we're going to be conscious. And so you use events like a tragedy, like a Nipsey Hussle tragedy, to advance the unity. You use a tragedy to advance the unity because if you do that, it reduces the possibility of the next voice being silenced because they don't want to keep silencing voices if every time they do it, we get closer instead of separate. If we get closer instead of separate, then they don't want to silence our voices. Now they got to figure out a new tactic, a new strategy. But they have no more strategies if we unify. They're all out of cards. Now, I've been watching all y'all leaders. I'm waiting. They're not doing no, no God shit. They're doing some um, egotistical stuff. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching them. But all they got to do is figure this. If the prophecy of Abraham is in reference to the lost found Negroes in America and that there's any validity to it. And 
as Farrakhan said in 1984, there's a significance to that year, George Orwell, that time dictates the agenda. And if you understand the times and you understand the prophecy and you know how to read the signs, you would understand the times. So once you understand that, you will know automatically what the agenda is. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. So we had the closing of the age. Your conscious community are all in their little bubbles. And we as a collective have to start pushing these bubbles together. We have to start pushing for um, uh, Pharaoh and Crumb to do a video on something they agree on. Not disagree, because the things they disagree on, the science will prove that later. Because we don't have the luxury of time left in order to clear up all of the misconceptions instantly like that. We don't have, because it's going to take um, a whole lot of work to put together what happened unless you know somebody that was there like at the fall and like was part of it and that three-fifth compromise individual sometime kind of way became five-fifths realized and said oh oh that's why we had to endure all of this rapage and pillage and colonization and capitalization suppression and oppression repression i didn't know we was that bad i didn't know that as bad as we was it made they worse look like they was being good to us i didn't know that whenever that five fifth realized individual come to tell the story and these isolated bodies of conscious individuals will have to have found enough common ground to come together as one and until they find enough common ground to come together as one the conscious community is the biggest problem to liberation when the conscious community don't see that the only solution is unity and that they don't have to agree on everything in order to pursue that unity the conscious community then becomes the problem so just like a regime um they have to be overthrown and the only way you can overthrow a conscious community is with a superior consciousness. That means you would have to be five-fifth realized, a full and aware self. As the comedic said, man know thyself. You mean you have to understand the full and total makeup of what you are physically. Multiple um systems operating in one organic phalanx nanotechnology matrix all of these systems are designed to work in harmony based off electromagnetic resonance and frequency are you aware of this are you aware that when your brain waves shift as your consciousness move up and down the spectrum various amounts of your whole light body can be regulated as coming in through your pons region in a reticular formation at the base of your skull are you aware of this i mean you conscious dr king told you about the black dot do you even know where it's at do you know how to enter it do you know how to get through the black dot into the realm of reality and out of the matrix i mean you conscious if you're not the obstacle you got to be the way if you're not the obstacle, you've got to be the way. And the only way is unity. The only way is unity. Only way to overthrow the same oppressor is everybody that got the same oppressor got to say, hey, man, I don't want him oppressing me no more, man. I ain't participating in his war games. I'm not participating in his war games. I'm going to tell all of these mothers, call your sons home. We ain't finna fight for these animals no more. Tell your sons and daughters to come home when they, because they got sons and daughters as MPs. Every child on this planet got a mama. If the mothers decide to exercise the rights of a mother and call their children home and tell them we're not fighting, tell them they can take their AKs and do whatever with them, but we ain't fighting. All the mothers on earth at the same time. Who going to fight the war for these animals? See, we're not paying attention.
we feed our children to their military machines, to their um, um, medical networks. We allowing our children to be firms for human organs. We allow them to be made into all types of food dishes to feed so-called royal families. And all of the time we conscious of what's going on and none of our actions is stopping anything. But we only got to give three orders to clean up the house. Three orders. The first order, just everybody stop and look like, what the hell just happened? What the hell just happened? But only specific people are qualified according to deeds and service to give the orders. Otherwise, the orders will not be taken seriously and that's gonna be not good for the entire planet if they're not taken seriously by the ones the orders are given to. So you have to look at the spectrum of leadership, analyze it. You got to find the one who's put in the most work and endured the most suffering and still remains in a prominent position in light of all of that. Because in order for that person to remain there, there has to be a greater power than himself to keep him there. There's no leader, black, white, Asian, or otherwise, that can maintain a leadership position in opposition to the collective will of the people unless it's a divine mission. That means that that person has something they have to do that's bigger than them and all they screw ups. And some of the things that they've been accused of may not even be the case. But because we didn't do our due diligence, we don't pay attention well enough because we are so conscious in quoting facts that we're not really paying attention to substance, the substance of the day and how to remedy the situation. So we find various individuals and in various positions to give us information. That's what the community should be called. It shouldn't be called the conscious community. It should be called the open information community because that's all they do is exchange information, but they make no moves that affect change. See, everything is supposed to be to affect change, to improve upon the adverse condition. When what you do doesn't actually make a noticeable change, then you are right, then you philosophize it. You're not actualizing. The philosophy is necessary, but it's not the end of it. You don't stop with the philosophy because now you have to actualize it by application. This is taking the military um, strategy off the drawing board and implementing it on the battlefield as a tactic and a maneuver. It's the same principle at play. If you want to be liberated from your oppressor, do not accept any type of uh, disparaging discussion from one forefront um, brother that's relaying information in relation to another one. Sisters as well. If they say something that support one another, support them, especially when you hear if like they're on a live like I am and you agree that they said something that supports another unconnected individual, that show them love on that because that's how they get the unity. They get to see that the people want them to work together. They'll work together because the people demand it. It's simple um, supply and demand. The people get what the people want. The customer are always right. If the people want freedom, the only thing they can do is push those like minds together and make them work. Make the think tank. Put the problem up on the board just like they do in math school when there's all of those physicists get together to figure out how to get this space probe from Earth to Pluto, an insurmountable obstacle. They go and get all these physicists, these mathematicians and scientists and put them all in the room, get a big old chalkboard and say, here's the problem, solve it. And they shut the door on it. And they come back with a solution to the problem. And we don't do that. So we see it work for them and we still don't do that. 
Now, that got to be some form of um, insanity because you see what works, but refuse to use what works in pursuit of that which absolutely do not work. Divide and conquer has never liberated anybody. There is no record in the history of the world, in the ancient tablets, in the etheric record, and I read them all, and I have not found anywhere where divide and conquer was an effective means of liberation. I found divide and conquer, I found a subject to a group of people being oppressed and suppressed. As long as you allow that divide and conquer to stand, your oppressor remains victorious over you. So wherever you see a conscious brother that you know do the work in the community, request that brother to work with another brother that's totally unrelated to if he's a hebrew israelite actually to go work with a foi don't we don't care about what y'all don't agree on we want to know what did y'all find that was similar in the teachings of elijah muhammad and the teachings of yahweh ben yahweh what did y'all find in common what do y'all find in common between the teachings of malachi york and the teachings of ben amikar what y'all find in common what did y'all find coming between what Dr. Dean said and what um, um, Claude Clegg said? Whoever, whatever they is, let's try to find, because when we find all that common stuff, we start to realize that all the stuff we was divided on was decoys. All of the things that, that we use them to stay divided is a decoy. It's like you want to go duck hunting and you go get you a string of decoy ducks and you throw them in the lake. But I haven't. I only got like four videos on there because I haven't really been doing YouTube yet because I've been trying to give these people the opportunity um, to um, come and do what they're supposed to do. And they got me sitting on standby. I ain't got no problem with being on standby. I've been on standby my whole life. I'm just tired of hearing these motherfuckers talking about they conscious and they aware and they know what's going on but they can't fix the goddamn problem. I'm telling these motherfuckers if they get off their goddamn hands and do their part, this shit is easy. All you gotta do is take three steps and use your power. The whole world gonna stop. It's already written. Um. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's it. Uh, Diane, it's right there. Morpheus Megas at YouTube. Yeah, um, right now I'm trying to get off all social media. I'm trying to get into a more practical reality of um, putting these sisters together. So once they first they got to meet, right? There's a group of sisters that I communicate with on social media that are very powerful sisters across the country in different locations. And um, they all got a, a role to play in the rebuild structure. In the structure for the rebuild, um, when they all do their part, it worked like it's like putting the dream team together. Um, every one of them, loving, beautiful, kind hearted women that want to see this shit stop, they're sincere, um, and they're doing their part, you know, like. Portia helped me do my research. And if I, you know, I need her to look something up, she's my like a my personal research assistant. And Aisha, um, she in California, but she has to run the Department of Education or the Rites of Passage program. So we're gonna get out of the Western concept of four walls, trap your mind, slow your child's brain down education, and we're gonna get back into the God Mind training where we try to speed the brain up to grasp information faster. You're teaching them with the wrong structure. So a baby is born with no knowledge. And when we start teaching them, you're supposed to teach them building blocks, colors, shapes, alphabet. But when they get into really learning, 
Then the next thing after the alphabet, you teach them finance. And after the finance is got, they got that now. Then you teach them speed reading. And once they can use the phonics to speed read, then you give them the biggest dictionary, the most comprehensive dictionary of the English language that you can if you're in England or America or English speaking country. Whatever country you're in, it's the same principles apply. Once they learn speed reading, you give them the dictionary, the, the most ex, um, exhaustive dictionary in that language, and you run them through that for about a year. Read the entire book over and over for about a year. Don't try to memorize it. Just read it. And while you're doing as you're giving them all of the meaning of the words in detail, the better they can understand the meaning of the word, the less effective the spell is on their psychology. The faster they can assimilate the information, the faster that they can see the deception in real time. That's why they don't like um, speed reading critical thinking and practical problem solving classes in inner city educational uh, facilities because those things takes the brakes off. If you ever notice, you got average children that go to average class. Then you have those who they say is below average, they send them to what they call a special educational program. And then you got what they call ex 